Not Who You Think, a Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction written and narrated by Christina Chang. Ladybug hoisted Felix to a standing position and pushed her foot off his chest, causing him to lean at a dangerous angle over the edge of the roof, with nothing but the leverage between her foot and her yo-yo keeping him upright. Felix just smirked. Come on, Ladybug. You think I believe you'd actually kill me by dropping me off a building? Ladybug jerked him close, with only a few inches between his eyes and her cold, hard stare. I'm willing to bet you're a bad enough villain for me to activate my lucky charm, which might repair any damage caused during your several hundred foot drop. But even if I choose to use it to bring you back, that doesn't mean you won't feel the pain of smashing against the ground if I don't call it out in time. She shoved him back, causing him to tip precariously over the edge, his body held up only by the taunt string of her yo-yo. A flash of fear broke through his calm demeanor, and he said angrily, Look, my uncle asked me to stand in for Adrian at some event while he secretly head off to some meeting outside of France. If you pull me back, I'll tell you where he is. Ladybug yanked him back onto the roof and released him curtly. Felix brushed himself off with a condescending sneer. Can't accept the fact that your partner abandoned you, eh, Ladybug? Her eyebrows furrowed in suspicion. What are you talking about? What, you don't know? I figured it out pretty quickly, but then again, I wouldn't expect someone as dense as you to put it together on your own. Her heart caught in her chest. She knew she shouldn't listen to him, but she'd already heard enough. Felix began taking deliberate steps around her. The same day Cat Noir gives up his miraculous is the same day that Adrian Agress has a mental breakdown, concerning enough to pull his psycho father out of the house, granting him his wish of leaving Paris. What did you do to him, anyway? He dropped his mocking tone and turned to glare defiantly at her. My cousin is the most genuine, kind-hearted person I know, and the fact that even he couldn't stand you is really saying something. He cocked his head. Or was it that you couldn't stand him? You took him for granted, and now you don't know what to do with yourself. You're pathetic, Ladybug. If anyone doesn't deserve a miraculous, it's you. Ladybug grasped her chest, her head swirling as she tried to think between unsteady chokes of air. Adrian was Cat Noir. Cat Noir was leaving Paris. Cat Noir gave up his miraculous and was going to disappear for good. He was hurt and leaving, and it was because of her. She looked down at the black ring she had taken from Felix, and without a second thought, she leapt off the building and raced across the rooftops, tears stinging her eyes as she made her way toward the Lars mansion. A single thought echoed in her mind. I can't be too late. Please don't be too late. I can't lose him again. Ignoring the beeping from her earrings, she anchored her yo-yo to the roof and swung herself down to his bedroom window, only to find it sealed from the inside. She tried the one to his bathroom and breathed a sigh of relief when she found it to be unlocked. She hurried inside, hoping and fearing to catch sight of Adrian, but instead found the room to be empty. Not only of Adrian, but she noticed several other things that were important to him were also missing, including the picture of his mother she'd always seen on his desk. Footsteps could be heard from outside the room, and she quickly ducked herself into the bathroom before pressing her ear against the door. It's what's best for Adrian, sir. She could hear Natalie saying. Some time away from a place so filled with memory will give him some time to recover, and you will still be able to continue your work here. Gabriel sighed. If only it were so simple, Natalie. I of all people know how hard it is to let go of someone I care about. We leave now if we want to meet Adrian on his train before heading to the airport. We will all stay away as long as he needs. The voices faded as they left the room. And Ladybug turned away from the door in despair. Too late. Adrian, Cat Noir was already on a train, leaving Paris perhaps forever. She would never have a chance to say how sorry she was for the distance that had grown between them, and to assure him of just how much he meant to her. Never have the chance to tell Cat Noir that she never lost trust in him, and that he was the best partner she could ever imagine. Never have the chance to tell her kitty that she realized just how much she loved him. She was too late. He was gone. She clutched her fist to her chest as she crumbled to the ground, just as her transformation wore off. 
With gut-wrenching sobs, she pulled herself tightly against her knees and sat curled up on the cold bathroom floor. Tiki was trying to say something to her, but she couldn't listen. All she could think about was how she had unconsciously pushed away her beloved partner and dearest friend. She was losing him, and there was nothing she could do. Tiki's words were growing increasingly urgent, and Marinette felt herself slowly look up as her tear-filled vision cleared causing her to recognize the dark shape that was slipping through the opening in the window. She gasped in alarm as Yakuma made his way in her direction. You have to fight it, Marinette, Tiki was saying, her voice pleading and filled with worry. There's always a solution. Marinette shook her head, her voice rising in panic. I can't do it, Tiki, I can't. I can't work. Her voice choked with sobs, and despite her desperate attempts to calm herself, she felt the panic in her body growing with every jolting breath, tears streaming down her face, and her eyes grew wide in terror as the dark butterfly darted towards her. With a final act of will, she pulled off her earrings and threw them desperately out the window. Find him, Tiki, she pleaded softly, before the shadowy being made its way against her clenched fingers and merged into the ring she still held in her hand. An overpowering force flooded her mind, and a voice echoed powerfully within her head. Kuro Neko, that pretender wasted your time and caused you to be too late in reaching the one you need and love. I will give you the power to give that liar exactly what he deserves. And once he tells you where to find the one you seek, you will be able to make things right between you and your partner, never to be separated again. All I ask is that when the time comes, you will do something for me in return. Yes, Shadow Moth. Crow Neko stood on top of the flat rooftop, waiting for Felix to make his move. Her dark hair was woven into a long, slim braid that brushed lightly against the ground, fists curled protectively over the ring on her finger, as her bright blue eyes peered out intently from beneath a black mask. Her cat-like ears twitched at the sound of footsteps below, and she crouched down as they grew closer, getting ready to pounce. With an angry cry, she launched herself off the rooftop and down onto the street, just as Felix neared the corner. He looked back at her in fear and surprise before quickly recovering and tearing off in a different direction. Crow Neko followed him, the long braids streaming out behind her as she ran. It wasn't long before she caught up to him. She swung her hair towards him, using it as a whip, the end attached to a spiked weight that responded readily to her commands. Felix tried to avoid her blows, but she swiftly overpowered him and he fell to the ground. She stood over him threateningly. Where is Adrian? What else did he say before he left? He's on a train to London, that's all I know. Colonel Neko dug her foot into his ribcage. There has to be more. There has to be something you aren't telling me. Felix pushed his hands against her foot in a feeble attempt to remove the pressure. Trust me, there's nothing more to tell. Her heart sank and she turned away from him, a feeling of hopelessness filling her soul. Felix slowly got up and tried to edge away when Kuroneka whirled around to face him, her eyes blazing with fury. Hugh. His eyes widened and he began full at running while Kuroneka followed closely on his heels. He raced between abandoned cars and zigzagged across the empty streets, but Kuroneko was steadily gaining on him. This is all your fault, she shouted furiously, catching his foot with her braid and yanking him back to the ground. He fell hard against the cobbled street and struggled to get back up. You pretended to be Adrian. You wasted my time, and now it's too late to change anything. She raised a gloved hand as she stepped closer to him. You're going to get what you deserve, Felix. Her face twisted in anger, she exclaimed. Cataclysm. Felix stopped cowering and stared her straight in the eye. You want to blame someone, Ladybug? The challenge in his voice caused her to stop, and the name flooded her mind with memories. If you're looking for someone to blame, the only one you should be looking at is yourself. None of this would have happened if it wasn't for you. The only reason Cat Noir gave up his miraculous is because you pushed him away. The only reason Adrian is leaving Paris is because it's too hard to be around you. And after being your partner for just one miserable day, I would probably do the same thing. So pin the blame on me if you want, Ladybug. But the only one you're fooling is yourself. 
Kuroneko felt her arm drop numbly to her side. He was right. Cat Noir was gone because of her. Adrian was hurt because of her. Nothing would ever be right again, and it was all her fault. She stood frozen in shock, and Felix quickly seized the opportunity to scramble to his feet and disappear from view. Her eyes fell to the pulsing swirl of destructive energy that circled around her fist, and slowly, almost subconsciously, she began raising it to her heart. She just wanted this to end. No more pain, no more sadness. Just a darkness that would engulf her and free her from having to think. Free her from feeling the guilt and loss it brought upon herself by her own actions. She needed to do this. She deserved to feel this pain. She felt herself be suddenly grabbed from behind. Her back pressed tightly against someone as a strong arm wrapped itself securely under her shoulder and a hand caught her by the wrist. Let me go! Let me go! She screamed, struggling violently to tear away, twisting and thrashing wildly as she continued to scream and grunt in desperation. She tried to reach him with her cataclysm, but instead the person holding her used their momentum to spin towards a nearby street sign, causing her hand to brush against the side of it, dispensing with the cataclysm. Her cries weakened, but she still wriggled furiously from within his steady hold. This wasn't fair. Why couldn't she just be left alone to grieve in peace? Quickly, her feelings of hopelessness changed to a cold, hard fury. If she couldn't punish herself, she would punish everyone around her. You'll never get away with this. I'll destroy you. I'll destroy everything. She tugged viciously at the red-clad arms wrapped tightly around her. But then a familiar voice spoke softly beside her ear. My lady, it's me. She stopped struggling and felt the breath catch in her chest. Cat Noir? He cautiously loosened his arms as she turned to face him, half frozen in disbelief. Actually, it's Mr. Bug at the moment, he said, sending her a slight smile. She stared at him, then rushed forward and threw her arms around him, sobbing as if her heart would break. Her legs gave out on her and they sank slowly together to the ground, her head buried against his shoulder. He held her gently as she wept, and the two sat alone on the empty Paris street. After her weeping subsided, Kuroneko pulled herself away from Mr. Buck's shoulder. He smiled reassuringly at her and let his arms fall to his sides. Feline better, milady. She tried to laugh, but it came out more as a cry. She sniffled, then quickly lifted her hands over her nose in embarrassment as she felt the light trickle of snot slipping down the top of her lip. Mr. Buck looked at her with a twinkle in his eye before pulling out his yo-yo and saying, Lucky charm. A small stream of ladybugs circled around them before dropping a little box into Mr. Bug's hand. Tissue? He offered softly, holding out the small piece of dotted red paper. This time, the former ladybug laughed as she accepted the tissue and daintily dabbed at her nose. You always could get it to do whatever you wanted, she said, shaking her head with a fond smile. Mr. Bug shrugged with a grin. Nah, just nose has to go easier on a simple guy like me. They sat comfortably for a moment, soaking in each other's presence. Then his face grew serious as he said, Lady, I am so... A blue-violet frame lit up in front of Kuroneko's face, and a voice echoed powerfully in her mind. Now, Kuroneko, you're within arm's reach of him. Seize his miraculous. Ah! She grimaced as her hands flew to her head, trying to shake off the evil force that had suddenly enveloped her. The voice in her head grew more urgent, and she found her eyes wandering in the direction of her partner's miraculous. Mr. Bug looked at her in concern, cautiously resting a hand on her shoulder in an attempt to steady her. You don't have to do this, Ladybug. You can break free from Shadow Moth's power. I'm here now. We can figure things out, together. Her body trembled as a cold panic washed over her at the mention of fighting against Shadow Moth's influence. Her fingers pressed tightly against her head as she struggled to gain control of her thoughts. Please, Ladybug, for me. The sound of her partner's voice, so full of tenderness and concern, broke through the cloudiness in her brain and made her decision finally clear. She frowned in concentration as she pulled every tattered strand of willpower into one large cluster, 
as the voice in her head faded and was replaced by a fierce love and loyalty towards a person she could never betray. She was about to summon all of her strength to resist the powerful will that had engulfed her, when a sudden thought came to her attention and she turned to Mr. Bug in alarm. If I break free from his akumatization, it will reveal my identity. I don't have my maracas, and I wasn't wearing one when I was akumatized. She looked nervously at the houses lining the empty streets, knowing full well that everyone's eyes remained on them. What are you doing, Kuroneko? The voice yelled from inside her head. You're supposed to get me his miraculous, not help him defeat you. She felt her breathing quicken as the pain in her head grew stronger. Don't worry, milady, I got you. With one swift motion, Mr. Bug scooped her up and she clung tightly to his neck as he carried her in the direction of a nearby alleyway. Once they were concealed in the shadows, he set her down and squeezed her shoulders gently. Don't be afraid, little bug. You can do this. I know you can. He closed his eyes, but stayed by her side as she once again focused all of her energy into resisting the power trying so desperately to maintain its hold on her. A fierce current of commanding force thrust down upon her, while a voice commanded her to obey. Give me your miraculous. Never! She gasped as a blast of power exploded above her head, severing the link between her and Shadow Moth, and would have fallen to her knees had it not been for the steady arms keeping her up. The dark outfit and long braid disappeared and were replaced by a simple black jacket and two small pigtails. Marinette noticed the ring still on her finger and murmured, Claws out. She breathed in as a soft leather surrounded her and she became Lady Noir once more. This time her hair was shorter, and her eyes remained their normal blue. You can open your eyes now, Mr. Bug. And things. He did so, and looked over her new outfit with a smile. I knew you could do it, my lady. Then his face fell, and he looked sorrowfully into her eyes. I'm so sorry, Ladybug. I should never have left you like that. No, I'm sorry, Cat Noir. I never meant for you to feel like I didn't need you anymore. Her voice trembled as tears filled her eyes, and she went on. I'm sorry I didn't let you in on my plans more often. I'm sorry I made decisions without telling you. I thought I had my reasons, but really, I was just scared. So scared of something happening because of it. Because of us, that I began keeping at a distance and fell into the same outcome myself. Mr. Bug looked at her in surprise. What do you mean, my lady? She took a deep breath, then smiled slightly, her voice growing stronger and more confident. I'll tell you about it soon, I promise. But right now, the important thing is I want you to know that I never lost trust in you, Cat Noir. And there's no one in the entire world who could ever take your place. She stared up at him earnestly, blue eyes searching his as she said quietly, I need you, Cat Noir. I... I love you. Do you... Do you really mean that, my lady? She leaned her head against his shoulder as she hugged him close before saying softly, Yes, I do. They held each other for a long moment. Then Lady Noir reluctantly pulled away and said, Everyone probably thinks I killed you over here. Mr. Bug grinned. They'd be right. I'm pretty sure I just died of happiness. She shook her head with a smile then said, all the same, I think we should go make a public appearance and let the people of Paris know that everything is back to the way it should be. Or almost, anyway. She gestured to the spotted red box that was still tucked into her partner's belt. Don't forget about that. He nodded, then said, There's something else we forgot, too. She tilted her head in confusion before her eyes landed on his outstretched fist. Found it? Found it. Lady Noir felt like her heart could explode from happiness and relief. Cat Noir was back, and they were partners once more. Her mind spun as she remembered he was also Adrian, and she felt the color rising in her cheeks. To think Adrian had been her charming, fun-loving partner all this time. She knew she would have to have a long discussion with him later that night, as she needed to tell him that Felix had discovered his identity, and that he had told it to her as well. They would have to come up with a plan together as to what to do next. But for now, she just wanted to enjoy this moment, standing by his side, free from the guilt and fear that had plagued her for so long. As they stepped out into the sunlight together, she caught a good glimpse of Mr. Buck's face, 
and for the first time she saw her partner as he truly was. His caring green eyes sparkled in the sunshine, with the same thoughtfulness and warmth she found so captivating in Adrian. Yet beneath them, Cat Noir's reassuring grin teased across his face, and she knew that no matter what happened, she would be okay. Her kitty, her love, her friend, all wrapped up in one amazing person. She loved him, all of him, and they would never have to be separated again. P.S. After Mr. Bug used his ladybug power, he and Marinette switched back to Miraculouses, and Plague was happily reunited with Adrian, who promised to never remove his miracles again, again. I started working on this story before the trailer for Kuroneko came out, using just the synopsis, back when I thought it might be Felix as Catwalker, because that seemed the most likely at the time to me. But after I saw the trailer, I was pretty sure it was Adrian, because he just looked so happy and nice. So I decided to go all out and give it a whole half reveal and everything, and akumatized Marinette, because up until this point, up until this season, I thought Marinette would never get akumatized just because it wouldn't work for the show. But now that we know people can break out of akumatizations, it seems like she actually could get akumatized sometime in the future. It actually seems a lot more likely than it ever did. So I decided to have fun with it and let the story kind of play out as it went. And I hope you enjoyed it. I also hope you have a wonderful day, and thank you so much for listening. Bye!